Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today because it's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. So, I tell you what, let's do a fantastic little painting together. And let's start out and run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And they'll come out right down there, okay? They come out in the same order that I have them on the palette, starting with the white, working around. But when you set your palette up, you do it any way that's comfortable for you. Let me show you what I've got done up here. I've got standard old pre-stretched canvas, and I've put a little contact paper cutout up here. This is just contact paper you buy at the hardware store or something. I've stuck that on, and then I've painted the center here with black gesso. Just a nice thin coat of black gesso. I allowed that to dry completely. Once that's dry, then we've added some transparent colors, and I'll tell you what colors I've added because I thought today we'd do a little sunset. And right across here, I've put Indian yellow, and Indian yellow is a transparent yellow, so it works very well. You may get a little greenish hue when you put it on, but don't worry about it. As soon as we add some color, it'll pop right in there. Right across here, I've added a little bit of alizarin crimson, and then on the top and the entire bottom, is alizarin crimson and phthalo blue, which makes a nice lavender color. And we just sort of blended that a little bit. So it's all ready to go. And up here, oh, this is fun. I was, I was drawing a couple of pictures of our camera people. This is, this is Richard. And over on the other side over here, then we have Kathy. These are, these are two of our camera people. They give me a hard time, so I thought I'd put their picture up there today. Hope you enjoy that. That was one of my early loves, was doing cartoons. And, a lot of times for my young friends, I'll sit and do cartoons and show them how to do it. Maybe we'll do that on the air one day if you'd like. Let's start out today with the old two-inch brush. And we'll use a little titanium white and just load some color into the brush, both sides. It doesn't matter, about like so. There we are. Better watch where I'm doing. Now then, let's go right in here, and we have to make a decision. Where is our horizon going to be? And I think mine will be about right here. And you can, at home, when you do this, you can see where the the yellow and the lavender sort of meet. We don't want to get into the lavender yet, just the yellow. Decide where the lightest area in this sunset's going to be. And you start in here and just start doing little crisscross strokes. I get a lot of letters from people all over the country who want a, a very simple and easy little sunset to do that's effective. So I thought today we'd do something that's nice and easy. Anybody can do this. Now start with the lightest area and blend outward always blending outward. There, just keep going outward now. And as you blend upward, then you're gonna get into all these other beautiful colors. Look at there. There, and you just keep blending and blending and blending. There we go. Now, automatically, that goes from light to dark, and you've done basically nothing. Let's wash the brush. And as you know, we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Be sure it's odorless. If it's not odorless, <laughs> if it's not odorless, you're going to be the most unpopular person in the house. And we never use turpentine. Turpentine, oh my gosh, one thimbleful will run everybody in the neighborhood out. I want to make this a little brighter, so I'm going back into the titanium white, load the brush exactly the same way. Let's go back up here. Once again, find your light spot and have this lightest spot a little bit off center. In other words, not dead in the center. It'll just look a little better composition wise that way. Start in this light area and begin blending outward. But you need to clean the brush every time. Otherwise, you'll, you'll bring this dark color down in here and you'll lose this beautiful glow. And that's what we're looking for. There we go. Just like so, and just work it out. Now you can do this as many times as you want to achieve a desired lightness. You could do it three, four times if you wanted to. But each time, it's gonna get brighter and brighter. But once again, I suggest that every time you do it, you wash the brush and start with a nice clean brush. Otherwise, you're gonna pull that dirty color right down in there. Now, going across just very lightly removes the brush strokes. And instantly. You can see that glow. It goes from the brightest all the way up to the dark. And that's one of the simplest, most effective ways I've ever came up with of making a very nice little sunset sky. And if we're going to work in the sky, I'll tell you what, let me grab a fan brush here. Let's make a little cloud out here in the sky. They're always a lot of fun and they're very effective. And of course we're never interested in selling paintings, but but if you should want to sell your paintings, these little extras like clouds and all kinds of little things like that, that'll make your painting sell. 
Let's take a little of that thalo blue, a little lizard and crimson. We'll just mix them together on the brush, like so. A little bit to the reddish side. You can make a lavender color here that's to the blue side or to the red side. I want to go slightly to the red side, but not a great deal. And you can mix this on the brush and just load both sides with a little bit of paint. Now then, you have to make a big decision in your world. Where does your cloud live? Maybe, maybe, maybe in our world, our cloud lives right about here. And I'm going to use just the corner of the brush. And think about the shape. Maybe this is going to be a big old cloud that just sort of floats around here and has a good time. As I've mentioned before in other shows, clouds are extremely free. They just sort of float around and they just enjoy being there. And when you paint clouds, think about that. Think about the basic shape that you want this cloud to be. Don't just throw in a bunch of color and, and, and hope that a cloud appears. This is very simple, but you, you do have to put in a basic shape. There we go. Maybe we'll give him a little leg here. There. But just think about how you'd like this cloud to be. If you were a cloud, what would you like to look like? You'd like to have a lot of nice designs and shapes and beautiful little forms. That's what we're looking for then. There. And you can get carried away and cover up the whole canvas if you'd like. And that's all right if you learn from it. Maybe in here, tell you what, let's get crazy. Maybe there's some little stringy clouds in here. And all you have to do is just fold the brush back and forth. Let it barely touch. And you can make all kinds of little clouds. I've got a little, little more of the crimson here, so it's a little bit more into the red side than even this cloud is only because it's a little lower and I think there'd be a little more light hitting it. I want it to just shine a little more, but just barely grazing the canvas, barely. There we go. Now then, let's take a clean, dry, two inch brush and we wanna very gently blend this. Now, there's two reasons. One, to sort of mix the color up. Most important though is to take off that excess paint. Watch here, watch here. Just use the corner of the brush and just Make tight little round circles, tight little circles, just like so. And that'll lift any loose paint off the canvas. There. And you can just blend that. If you blend it enough, it'll just eventually go right into the other color and sort of disappear and just become a, a big dark shape there. Don't do that. Don't do that. There we are. Now we'll beat the brush. And all that does is just remove the paint off the brush, very gently. All right. Now, you can fluff this cloud a little if you'd like, very gently. Two hairs and some air. That light. But this will lift it and make it look fluffy. And then very lightly, very lightly, just go across it. This removes all the brush marks and blends it all together. But isn't that a fantastic way to make a big old cloud that's up here in your sunset? Now these little thin ones that we made down here, they're the easiest of all because all you have to do here is just very lightly with a clean brush, be sure it's clean and dry. You can go across and you can pull that if you want to. So give it a little pull and you can bring that together that easy. There we are. Now, isn't that an effective little sky to be made that easy? And you really can do this. Even if you've never painted before, this is a very simple one to do. Now then, let's mix up a little, oh, we'll take some lizard crimson, little, let's use a little Prussian blue. We'll make a dark lavender color, more to the blue side this time. Shoot, we can throw a little bit of Van Dyke brown there. Not a great deal, just a little, just to dull it down a little. I use brown as a color to dull other colors a lot of times when I want to do this, just so it's not too bright. Let me clean my knife. There we are. And we'll just use the old two inch brush again. Shoot, that's a lot of fun. So often we avoid this brush because it's so large, but it'll do fantastic things. I'm just tapping, just tapping like so. There you are, just give it a little push. That creates a little ridge of paint. There, see it? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Now then, back in here, you have to have been thinking about what lives back here. And I'm just using the corner of the brush. And we're not committed here. All we're doing 
is begin laying in some, some general ideas, like so, just where these colors come together. Okay, now that gives us a, a very basic little horizon. A little more color. There we are. Now then, now we can begin thinking about little individual trees and bushes that live in here. And maybe in our world, <laughs> there is now. Maybe there's a big tree that lives right here. See, but that easy. Just using the corner of a two inch brush, you can put in a very basic little shape for a nice tree. And sometimes this is a little scary if you've never tried it. So just practice. This two inch brush is fantastic. But if you're a little more comfortable with a one inch brush, shoot, feel free to use it. The only thing we want you to do here is to be happy with what you've done. If you're happy with your results, then it's good. Let's go over the other side here. and We don't want it left out. Maybe we can have another little tree. He lives way on up here. In almost up in the cloud. There. There we go. Maybe he's got a friend over here. Everybody needs a friend. Ooh, I don't want to cover up that nice part of the cloud. That is beautiful. Maybe a little something there, wherever you want. There. See, isn't that easy? Already you begin to make out all kinds of little things that live in there. Now then, let's take, let me find my little liner brush. Dip it in a little, little of the paint thinner. We'll go back into that same color. But the paint is very thin, it's almost like ink. Almost like ink. Turn that brush in there. This is a script liner brush. It has very long hair, so it comes to a very sharp point. There you can see it, right there. Very sharp point though. Now then we can go up in here and we can begin putting the indication of some little trunks in here. Little sticks and trunks and all the little things that live inside your tree. The little squirrels have to have a place to play. There. And if you've watched the series before, you know I'm sort of a fanatic for little creatures. And uh, I just have a special liking for little squirrels, I guess since there's so many around where I live. And I've raised quite a few of them. And they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun. There. Sometimes when I get angry at them, they'll call them tree rats. There. Because if you shaved his tail, you wouldn't let him in the house. There we are. Let's go on the other side over here and put some little things in these trees. Now, if you have trouble making this paint flow, you just need to add a little more paint thinner to it. Thin paint will slide right over the top of this thick paint. And the, the paint that we use here is very dry and very firm, very thick. And that's what allows you to do this one layer after another on top of each other without becoming a mud mixer. If you use a thin, oily paint, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble because your paints will just mix together And if you're going to use the thin paint, then I recommend you allow the paint to dry between each layer. The one thing that's so fantastic about this is the fact that you can do it all while it's wet. Find a clean brush there. All right, let's take let's take a little sap green, a little yellow, a little yellow ochre. So we have cad yellow, a little yellow ochre. Reach over here, get a little of that Indian yellow. All those beautiful colors. Let me get a little more of the sap green. I'll darken that a little more. Maybe even a little black there. Okay, now we just give it a little push. Once again, we want to create that little, see that little right there, that little ridge of paint. Push. There, that's what makes this work. Just push. Okay, let's go right up in here. Now then maybe this tree right in here, we want to put some highlights. Here's our light source. So all you do is come slightly above the dark and begin thinking about your basic form and shape in this tree. And just let all these little things happen. There. See, by mixing color on the brush, you have a lot of things that are happening in the brush. There we are. 
just layer after layer. And you can create some of the most spectacular little trees like this you've ever seen. And it's very, very simple. Sometimes you add at least a little touch of paint thinner. If you have trouble making it stick, just like with a liner brush, all you do is add a little bit of thinner and then it'll stick. Add at least a little touch of bright red to this one. Ooh, nice. It's nice. Well, that little rascal's got character. He's sitting out here watching the sun sink right behind that hill. So he's got the best view of all. Now, while we have that going here, we can begin thinking about little things that live underneath here. Because you always have all kinds of little happy bushes and trees and plants that grow in here. Now, if you're a little more comfortable with a one inch brush, this will work just as well with a one inch brush. I just sort of like this one. But try them both. See which one you feel the most comfortable with, and off you go. Let's go up the other side over here and put some, put some nice things in there. There we are. Just once again using the corner of the brush. This is our light source. So it'll be highlighted more on the other side of the tree. There. Always think about where your light's coming from. Okay, maybe a little touch of the bright red added to that. Ooh, give it a nice orangey flavor. There we are. There we are. Okay, then our little undergrowth, little things underneath here. We just put in all kinds of little doers. There's one. But notice that we're leaving some of these dark areas in here. These little dark areas are very important. Sometimes you get doing this and it starts working so well and it feels good. Mm. And you just, you get carried away and you cover up all the dark. And if you do, then your painting is going to look very, very flat and you're going to be unhappy with it. There, and we want this to work for you. So be conscious of these dark areas and don't lose them. Sometimes I believe they're, they may be more important than the light areas for creating that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. Okay, I'm going to get a little touch of the black and add to my yellow, make it nice and darker green. And let's think about maybe there's some nice soft little grassy areas in here. Very gently. I'm going to get, a, let me get another brush here. I want a clean brush to do that. So it's a little darker. There. There, that's better. Don't want this to get too bright on us and darker, darker, darker back over in here. Can actually just about fade away. Just fade away. It's like old soldiers do. I'm an old soldier. I spent half my life in the military. They say old soldiers never die. They just fade away. There. So the same thing here. You just allow that to fade. Now, notice these angles. This is how you create the lay of the land. Just by changing these angles, you can totally change the way that the land flows or what's happening in your painting just by changing those angles. There we go. Darker, 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 maybe down in here. But look at the depth that's in here, and it's because of all these little different planes. Isn't that a super way to make a little sunset? And even you've never painted. This one is so simple you can do. This black gesso is one of the neatest things that I've ever developed. I hope you enjoy it. There. Okay. Like so. These little cartoon characters I showed you up at the top up here. When I was young in school I used to do these all the time when I was supposed to be doing my, my lessons. I would sit and draw cartoons, and for many, many years I wanted to be a cartoonist. But it just never worked out. But this is the next best thing. But it's a super way for young people to get into it. Every day I get letters from people all over the country, and a lot of my young friends send me letters and they draw cartoons for me. And they're beautiful. You can't believe what's happening. And I feel so fortunate that this show has got so many young people interested in art. And 
I know some of them are going to be fantastic. You know, whether you do it for a living or for pleasure, as I've said so many times, art is one of those things that should make you happy. And if it makes you happy, then it's good. Let's go over here. I want to put a little of that yellow ochre over here, too. It looks so nice on the other side. I'm, this side's getting jealous. There we go. Boy, that's a beautiful place to have a little path or a, or a happy little stream coming right through there. And these things, if you come from each side, this will just sort of happen automatically. Don't, don't just try to copy when you're doing these. Look at your painting and, and look at what happens because every painting in the world is going to be different. There are no two paintings that will ever be alike. So look at your painting and you pick out little things like this and follow them. Go with them. Let the, let the canvas work. My gosh, that's what, oh, that's fun. That's when you really experience the joy. Let's take a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, a little touch of white. I don't want this real dark. We'll just use a fan brush. Let's go right up in here. Now, if you want the little path, all you have to do is just take a fan brush and work it back and forth in here. Make it small in the back, and then as it gets closer to you, let it get darker, 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 darker. But I'm sort of doing this, I'm exaggerating now, but like so. So that way it'll look like the, the ground's sort of been wore down a little from all the little creatures or people maybe. I don't know, maybe there's a little pond over there that everybody goes over and fishes in. But from animals or people walking in here, it sort of has a little roundish area. And see if you decide you want to move the path over here, just go right over whatever's there. Shoot, you have tremendous power here. You can do anything that you want to do here. You can change this any way that you want to. Now, if you want to show a little highlight, take a little white on your brush and very lightly, very lightly, just let it graze. And you can create the illusion of a little light zinging through your path. That easy. But darker, darker, darker down here toward the foreground. But a lot of distance can be created just by doing that. Let's have some more fun. Shoot, grab that fan brush again. I'll go right into some, oh, let's take some black and some Van Dyke brown, mix it together. I want a dark, dark color. Very dark. Maybe in our world there lives right here. Right here. Get, this is your bravery test. Maybe there lives a big tree. Zoom. Right there. Maybe he's got an arm on him. Tree needs an arm too. Zoom. Like that. And you know me. I think everybody, even a tree, should have a friend. So let's put another one right there. Right there. Give him, maybe we'll give him a little arm that's crooked out mm, that way, however you want him. Take a little of that same color on the liner brush with paint thinner. Let's go up in here, put the indication here and there. Oh, some little limbs, little tree needs some little fingers sticking out on his arms here. There. I got a letter one time from somebody that told me that I had really lost it now. I'd, I was telling everybody that trees had arms and legs and foots. But you know, painters are expected to be a little weird. So that's all right. If it helps you in your painting to make up little stories, even if they're a little silly and people laugh at you, it's all right. Anything that works for you is wonderful. Now I'm going to take a least little touch of the bright red and thin down. I'm just going to run right down these edges here a little bit. Just a, that's beautiful. Boy, that sparkles. Just enough to let that stand out a little. Don't want a lot. Just, ooh, isn't that something? And just let it fade right back. Now then, let's go back to our two inch brush that has the dark color on it. We'll go right into a little black. A little black, maybe be right back, a little lizard and crimson mixed together. There we are. Let's go right up here. We need a few little leaves on this. Just drop in a few. We don't want a whole bunch, just sort of silhouettes. Don't want to get too many or we'll lose all of our beautiful clouds and stuff back here. But even if you lose them when you do yours, at least you learn how to make them so the time's not wasted. I'm going to add a little bright red to that same color. We'll let that, uh, the black and the color on there will dull it. 
so it is very dull there but just enough to give you a little hint of color there mm. okay so now we're good that makes a nice little silhouette now we can go back to our two inch brush that we made grass with put a little color on it we want to clean up his little foots down here. There I go again, giving him feet and arms and hands and all that stuff. See there? That easy. Like so. You can just create all those illusions just by tapping with a great big old brush. Tell you what, I think the moment of truth is here. Let's bring the camera up here. There goes our little cartoons. Bye, Richard. We'll just take this contact paper off. And this is when it's really fun. This is when you get to see if what you've done worked. Sometimes in some of these now, I like to, to take and extend the painting outside the oval. Today, I'm pretty satisfied with it the way it is. So I tell you what, take the old liner brush, a little paint thinner, some bright red, make the paint thin like water or ink, and let's sign this one. We'll sign it right down here. Another question I get all the time is, how do I sign the painting? What do I use for a signature? Anything that makes you happy. You can use a first name, a last name, initials. I've even known people who sign with a symbol. Each person is different, so you make up your own way of signing it, and it becomes your personal signature. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, God bless, and I look forward to seeing you next time.